Welcome to the Erectile Dysfunction Radio Podcast. This is the podcast dedicated to educating and empowering men to address erectile dysfunction, improve confidence, and enhance the satisfaction in their relationships. This podcast is brought to you by ErectionIQ.com. Learn more at ErectionIQ.com. Welcome to the Erectile Dysfunction Radio Podcast. I am Mark Goldberg, Certified Sex Therapist. I am deeply passionate about working with men like you to help resolve their ED. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the ED Radio Podcast. We are discussing erectile dysfunction after a divorce on today's episode. Mark Goldberg, as always, will be the expert on call today on the ED Radio Podcast. I'm going to open up this discussion by asking him about what are some of the mental issues that someone experiences after a divorce? And then we'll start talking about how that is connected to erectile dysfunction. So Casey, divorces are really difficult to talk about as a single type of event. Everybody's relationships are different. Everybody's marriages are different. Length of time, reason for divorce and whatnot. But I think if we're going to talk in generalities, there are a number of uh, mental health Uh, issues and concerns that may come up around a divorce. So first and foremost, the reason why we bond or one of the primary reasons why we bond uh, in the 21st century really has to do with a sense of connection, a sense of safety, security, companionship. And a divorce is the dissolving of that type of relationship, that type of bond. So first and foremost, people can experience all sorts of relationship-based anxieties and relationship-based depression. Divorce is also costly in many cases. It puts a financial strain on a lot of uh, people who are going through it. Sometimes there's shame and embarrassment associated with a divorce. If you are the person who's initiated the divorce, there could be feelings of guilt feelings of responsibility. If your partner is the one who initiated the divorce, there could be feelings of abandonment, isolation, self-doubt, other insecurities. There can also be interpersonal issues that develop within a family system where uh, a child or children are blaming you or are blaming your your ex-partner. And relationship stress or interpersonal stress can also develop. Uh, This is some of the basics among a whole bunch of other factors that can be relevant and pertinent to other people's lives when they're going through a divorce. Why do you think people seek therapy after undergoing a divorce? So first and foremost, because the issues that we just mentioned, a lot of these do have a significant and substantial impact on mental health. And uh, people struggle with these feelings. They struggle, they struggle with the anxiety, the depression, the isolation, feelings of shame, guilt, responsibility, and whatnot. I think also that life transitions, divorce being among them, are an opportunity for people to introspect, for people to reflect on what they want uh, out of their lives, mistakes that they feel like they have made, issues that they have not addressed in the past. So not only are there things that surface pertaining to the divorce, but I think it opens up a more broad question or, or broader questions for a lot of people who are going through that. Lastly, I think another area that people struggle with post-divorce is how to move forward with their lives. And this can be uh, how to move forward alone, how to move forward into another relationship, how to move forward uh, with their families. So there's a lot of issues that people might seek to resolve or address through therapy post-divorce. And I'm trying to think of reasons why ED might occur to a man that has undergone a divorce. And what pops into my mind is a new sexual partner may be in the picture. Do you think it's common that men will struggle with ED with a new sexual partner coming out of a long-term relationship that follows the divorce? So speaking in generalities, I, I think there's an increased probability that a man will encounter uh, erection challenges Uh, as he transitions from a long-term relationship to a new relationship. I think sometimes, you know, certainly in the framework of a divorce, we underestimate 
the value and the importance of the comfort, the routine, the predictability that we had in that relationship. Even when there are problems in the relationship, there are layers and levels of connectedness, of comfort, of security in many of these instances that only after a person has separated or divorced do they recognize or realize what that actually means to be alone or what that actually means to lose the comfort, the familiarity of another person and of the routines that they had. I think it is much more likely that a man will first encounter either erectile dysfunction, other sexual challenges, or will see a noticeable amplification of pre-existing challenges. Of course, divorce is a life-changing event, no doubt about it. Do you want to talk a little bit more about life-changing events and how they ultimately impact erections? Sure. The way I think about this is any life event that is either profoundly stressful or reorganizes a family's structure can have a significant impact on mental health and on interpersonal relationships. If a person experiences, or in particular in this case, if a man is experiencing something like job loss, this can impact the way he feels about himself, the way he relates to family members in particular, the way he relates to his sexual partner. If a family is in the process of sending off their last child uh, to college and now they're in the empty nester phase. So that introduces new dynamics into a relationship that uh, can be very stressful. Uh, The first time that a couple in many, oftentimes in decades, is just with themselves and their children are out of the home changes the way or changes the need of relationship uh, between these two people. Any of these types of events can impact uh, relationships and ultimately impact sexuality and sexual function. Now I want to look on the bright side of things, kind of flip the discussion a little bit. Could erections possibly be improved after a divorce Perhaps there was a toxic relationship involved and that got ended. Thus, the erections could be improved with a new sexual partner. What's your thoughts on that? So without running a promotion for divorce as a way to resolve erectile dysfunction, I think the answer is absolutely. Most commonly, if the sexual relationship in the marriage was very strained and was a major point of contention... If a man was in a relationship or in a marriage where he felt sexually inadequate and that had something to do with what was happening between him and his partner, then a divorce could alleviate some of that. Now, I, I want to be very cautious, though, uh, as I'm as I'm saying that, yes, divorce could be um, a, a man could see an improvement in erections post-divorce. I think... It's very easy to blame a partner or a relationship when it comes to what wasn't working. But I think that people are best served by examining their own role and what they could have done better or what they could have done differently or what they can do differently moving forward. So I think some men will experience at least a temporary improvement in erections, but will find that some of the old patterns that they were a part of contributing to that didn't work for them in their previous relationship have a way of resurfacing in a new relationship and can lead back to the same type of sexual dysfunction or it could be even more pronounced. So yes, I think that a divorce can certainly lead to a temporary alleviation and it may help to illuminate what wasn't working. But Imagining that if you just eliminate your partner and move on to a new relationship, things will resolve themselves on their own, I think is a little bit risky to say the least and probably ignores a big part that a man is contributing to his own relationship distress and ultimately to his own sexual dysfunction. I really appreciate how thorough you were in that answer because that is not an easy question to address. 
We do just like to ask all the tough questions here on this podcast and explore all angles of pretty much everything involving the mental side of erectile dysfunction. So we just wanted to make sure we at least looked at it through that lens. And I appreciate that thorough response. Mark, any final thoughts before we wrap up today's episode on erectile dysfunction after divorce? Casey, I think we covered some of the main basic components uh, that may be contributing to onset or an intensification of uh, erectile dysfunction or other sexual dysfunction post-divorce. I recognize that it is oftentimes a very emotional and confusing time when people are going through a divorce. Uh, sexual function may be on the radar. It may not be on the radar. I think I answered a lot of the questions here under the assumption or under the guise that a man is aware that there is a profound shift between pre- and post-divorce. I think what happens in actuality is that in many instances, when a man goes through a divorce, he's not necessarily jumping back into a partner relationship right away. And the impact of the divorce can actually be a little bit trickier to identify because the expression in sexual dysfunction may be further down the road. So if this seems to be a pivotal or a turning point, even if there has been a delay between the time that you separated from your first part from your previous partner, and you've gotten together with another one, this still may be a very significant time period or a very significant life event that is having residual or ongoing effects. So I don't want men who are not immediately after a divorce to think that this is not necessarily relevant for them as well. Thanks for listening to the Erectile Dysfunction Radio Podcast. For more information on today's topic and understanding how the mind impacts erectile dysfunction, please visit ErectionIQ.com. That's ErectionIQ.com.